and it's now time to check in at our accommodation for the next few days which is at uh, Hawkswood Country Estate and I've got to say from what I've seen so far this place looks pretty impressive go on go on go on oh I've done a lot of that over the last few days it's the final episode from Fife, but maybe more importantly, it is the final episode of Scotland's Less Obvious. We'll be on the golf course very soon. I'm on my way to Crail later on today, but short game wasn't great yesterday, so I've spent a bit of time this morning. But I'm not on a golf course. This is my own private practice facility. Put in short game area in terms of the bunkers, and I'm gonna get off to the range very shortly and then I'll take you for a little look around this place because it's pretty special. Welcome to my humble abode. This is some gaff this, you know. I'll take you on a quick, I never really pay much attention to accommodation, but I can't not show you this place. But Nick Faldo stayed here, by the way, on the, uh, when the Open was last at St Andrews in 2015. back out on the golf course. I've just teed off on what is a third hole. No chatters yet because the wind is blowing a hoolie. Don't be deceived by the sun. It is breezy to say the least. Then waves are choppy out there. What you see over there is the Balcony links. We're playing the Craighead links. And I've got to say two holes in. This is going to be one heck of a ride. It's uh, already, it's tough, but how pretty is it? down yeah not too bad I've put for birdie and I don't think I'll be saying that many times today uh, just drifting away a bit good pace right I've pitched up on my little stone wall because uh, well I love these things on the golf course uh, they add a heck of a lot of character to a golf course and character is uh, something that you don't really expect from a course that is uh, well, it's just over 20 years old um, and it's just played, just teed off on the par five, six hole. And uh, I've got to say, I absolutely love this place. Like I said, for such a young course as well, it uh, seems to have bedded in quite nicely. It is playing toughish, uh, the breeze is strong, but to be fair, it's that kind of course again, iron off the tee, and if you can get it chasing down the fairway, uh, get an extra few yards out of it. Um, but look at what is to come. We're about to get onto a backdrop that's, uh, pretty damn stunning so I'll see what I've got left in because I've just managed to avoid wall I've avoided bunker and I'm middle of the fairway so uh, where is a par five so we've got left into this one well, I just did two three irons on the par five and uh, the second one chased in low all the way it looked what was a fantastic shot, but it's chased right through the back end. And, uh, but look at the movement in the green, a super golf hole. Let's see if we can get back up and down. Come on, get up, over the brow. Over the brow and turn. Go on, ball. Oh, do you know what? That's a pretty damn good shot to be fair, but left myself, I don't know, eight foot for birdie. Oh, well, as you've seen, I uh, didn't quite make that birdie. I can't believe how many putts I've lipped out. But anyway, uh, I just, 
I don't know how good Balcony Links is because I've never played it, but um, this place seriously is, I'm on the seventh hole now. Just look at that for a backdrop. If you're a member here and you're playing golf, then you're, uh, you're a one lucky golfer. Uh, the Isle of May is uh, in the backdrop there. It's a nature reserve. I don't know a great deal other than that, I'm afraid, uh, but it's been fairly visible throughout. Uh, and we've got, again, you can see from the flag, a wind howling off the left and uh, that green that just sits on the horizon with the water in the backdrop. They don't get much better than that in terms of views, do they? In terms of yardage, yeah, 166 with the wind off the left. It's really hard with club selection. I'm gonna go with an eight iron because it seems to be off the left but helping. And I'm gonna try and hit that's kind of like that sort of soft cut that we got on the last and see if it holds up a little bit better than last time. Oh, I should be bang on if that's got, come on, be right, be right. Oh, is it short? Kick up, kick up, stay up. It's, oh, it's coming back down to the, it's held up. That looks so good in the air and uh, probably looking, I don't know how far that flag is, on, but we were perhaps just a club short, I think. Our 10th tee, look at that. Those white waves crashing. I don't know if that's uh, good for surfing, but it, uh, it looks impressive from this tee box. We're going to the white flag um, on the right-hand side. You can see right-hand side of your frame. 280, and I'm uh, gonna have a bash it with the driver because the wind's uh, helping again off that left-hand side. I think the red flag you can see uh, to the left and on the horizon, uh, they must be for the Balcony links. sign there 200 yards to what is the wall I wasn't tr too sure what exactly I was playing with it six iron and I've come up wherever 10 yards short so it's uh, potentially a perfect layup but then the, there's a rise to this wall and on the horizon there is the flag and the green we're going to I just hope this doesn't ricochet back and knock my teeth out it's right into the sun it's down the right hand side and we'll see what we end up with i mentioned earlier on about the movement in the greens and how much uh difficulty there is in them to be honest with you and again i've come up short with that uh, wedge shot but just look at the movement in that green uh first ridge then the second ridge just short of the flag and uh, certainly ask the question of uh, any golfer never mind an average one if it gets up this could be good go on ball go on Oh, that's not bad from an average golfer. Visited some amazing places through Scotland's less obvious, and uh, this is the 21st course. It's the final one of the series. And in terms of views and backdrops, I've not seen anything more spectacular than that. To be honest with you, it is—it's just perfect. We are literally right on the water's edge, and the view of the water is constant throughout this. Um, well, throughout every hole we've played so far, we're on 13. Perfect little par three, 140 yards. That stone wall yet again makes an appearance. It doesn't get much better, does it?
Right, is this the moment that the nap putter finally gets that birdie of some distance? I've got a feeling this could be it. And break back, and break back, and break back. I thought the double break would be the time for it to uh, make its mark. It close enough to be fair, and a decent three. But as ever, forget the score, what a great golf hole that is. 16th hole, the shadows right across the green, uh, right across the fairways, uh, oh my word. Breathtaking stuff this afternoon. And do you know what, the golf's not been bad either. That's right down the middle. Right, well that's it, we're finished at Crail and uh, that course was absolutely fantastic. It was breathtaking. I love the design of the course and um, yeah, I can't say enough. And I always say the same thing, if we've done a good enough job with the camera, then uh, the pitches should uh, speak for themselves. And it was a great way to finish what's been a fantastic series. 21 courses, seven regions right the way across Scotland. Uh, thank you to everybody that's been very hospitable, whether it's been from the accommodation we've stayed in, uh, pros, assistant pros, catering staff, all the people that have looked after us very well throughout those 21 courses. It's been a fantastic journey. It's a shame it's got to come to an end and uh, hopefully, and no doubt I will be in Scotland again very, very soon. So uh, to everybody who's watched and supported the series, uh, a massive thanks. And hopefully I'll see you back out on the fairways sometime soon. But for now, that's it, we're finished. Scotland's less obvious is done.